Okay, so here is an application involving the four shuffles that we demonstrated today. Um, I need to emphasize, as always, that no, not only can these four shuffles be performed within this demonstration and not undermine anything that we hope to accomplish, any of the shuffles in this entire series can't be performed in any order and in any quantity. That is the amazing thing. And it's because the only shuffles I'm showing you are Bessie shuffles. And Bessie shuffles preserve or invert Bessie sequences. And as will become clear by the time that we finish the series, many, if not a majority, of the systematic shuffles used today are indeed Bessie shuffles. They either preserve or invert Bessie sequences. So you can see my selection of cards here. So let me just gather those up. So let's go ahead and perform these shuffles in any order and in any quantity, actually. Now, of course, you're not here, so I'm going to have to make choices for you. But if you were here, you would freely be given the option to choose one or more of these shuffles in whatever order that you would like. So why don't we begin with shuffle uh, 20 three, let's say. Okay, so that's a judicious, judicious transpose. Okay, now all of these shuffles um, begin with the same dealing out, right? Hopefully I've made that clear. The only difference is the stacking. And that stacking makes an enormous difference to the outcome of the ordering of the cards. So for shuffle 23, the stacking is as follows. We take the first pile and stack it on top of the third. You can think of that as leapfrogging over its neighbor. We take the second pile and stack it on top of the fourth. You can also think that think of that as a leapfrog action. And then finally, we stack the left pile on top of the right, like that. Okay, so we've performed uh, shuffle 23. Which one would you like next? 22? Okay, that would be just fine. So we deal out into these little pairs. One, two, one, two. Okay, so what's the stacking now for shuffle 22? It's stacking from right to left. Okay, so if you look at the notation there, it's just a way of describing stacking these piles from right to left. Uh, which one would you like next? Shuffle 21. Okay, we can do that one next. So we do one, two, one, two, one, two. And now for shuffle 21, the stacking is from left to right. Okay, so we go from left to right. And at any stage, you can check the ordering of these cards and it will be different because of the shuffle being applied. The cards are truly being scrambled here. Um, let's see, the last one that we haven't done, if, if we're going to just perform each of these once, which we wouldn't have to. We can perform any of these as many times as the spectator calls for. Uh, but let's go ahead and finish with Shuffle 24. I believe that's the one we haven't done yet. So Shuffle 24. Okay, the one, two, one, two. If these aren't sticking. <laughs> one, two. And now the stacking for Shuffle 24 is the leapfrog. So we leap over its neighbor, one on top of three, leap over its neighbor, two on top of four. But this time we're stacking the right pile on top of the left. Okay. Now please know that we can perform any of these additional times and then whatever order you would like. Okay. But let's go ahead and just kind of finish. So what I'm doing here is I'm just dealing out the cards into two piles, four cards each. And then what I'm going to do is a fun little shuffle. It's called the Klondike. This is where you take the bottom and top card off as one. Sorry about that. These are uh, new cards and strange cards because they stick. And then I'll take the top and bottom card off as one, like that. Okay, that's the Klondike. And what does that result in? Okay, well, let's take a look here. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, two red, two black, two black, and two red. You've got to be kidding me. How did I match up 
exactly the card colors of these eight cards. Now this could have had a written predict I could have had a written prediction off to the side that I would open before we show these cards to say that we have successfully somehow with all of the choices made by you the spectator we have successfully paired up cards of the same color and that would be true we would finish in this way okay so how does this work um, so sorry about these cards like I said are not technically bicycle cards playing cards they're Zelda cards actually <laughs> So they're, they have a different feel to them. Okay, so uh, let me explain the way I started and you could start differently if you want it, okay? So what I did was I built a Bessie sequence relative to card color, okay? Well, think about what would that be, a Bessie sequence relative to card color? Well, we would need something like red, black, black, red, followed by black, red, red, black, okay? So this would be one version of a Bessie sequence relative to card color. The other one that we could have done is black, red, red, black, red, black, black, red. That would be the inversion of this one relative to card color. So this is where I began. If you want to begin here, that would be great. Just kind of set up the cards this way to the untrained observer, if they look at the, this little packet of cards, they will see no special organization whatsoever. They could even stare at it for a while. They'll probably see nothing of interest. Okay, they really won't. Um, but if you want to use that clever technique that Warner Miller, who's one of my subscribers, sent in, and I've used it uh, a few times in some of my videos regarding Bessie sequences, what you can do is begin with, let's say the four red cards on top, the four black cards on bottom, and maybe even openly show these if you would like. You can just show them that, okay, we have four red cards and four black cards. And then perhaps off to the side on a piece of paper, Maybe you've written a little prediction saying all of the pairs will consist of cards of the same color. So within each pair, you'll have either two red or two black. Okay, so you could have a written prediction if you want. Okay, so what you do is just gather these up. So the top half is red, top four are red, bottom four are black. Okay, so Warner Miller came up with this wonderful triangle deal that converts this structure type to a Bessie sequence. So this is where you deal into a triangle, counter, excuse me, clockwise. So you deal clockwise until you run out of cards. And then you pick up the first packet first, the one that you dealt out first, and then stack in counterclockwise order. Now what this is guaranteed to do is it will convert it, let me just do it this way, it will convert it to a Bessie sequence of some sort. Here it's converting it to one in which the leading color is black, which is just fine. So this is a Bessie sequence relative to card color. Black, red, red, black, red, black, black, red. Okay, so that's a kind of a classy way of converting that original structure into a Bessie sequence once it's the Bessie sequence, it's going to be protected against the effects of all of the shuffles that I will be showing you in this, ser this series. And in particular, it will be protected from the four shuffles we've introduced today. Now, what do we mean by protected? We mean that this packet will either be returned to its original color organization as a Bessie sequence, or its inversion, where the red cards switch places with the black cards in some fashion, okay? So in that way, this packet truly is impervious or unharmed by all of the shuffles that we will show you in this series. Mathematically, we would say it's invariant. And to be super precise, it's invariant up 
two inversion. What does that mean? That means we either get the original packet structure back as a Bessie sequence, or we get an inversion of that. And either one will serve our purposes just fine. We actually don't care which one we get. We don't care if this packet is inverted or not. And as we've talked about today, some of these shuffles invert, like the first one here, that inverts the sequence or the packet. This one does as well, number 22. 23 does as well, but 24 does not invert it. And so at this point, you can perform as many of these pairwise transpose as you like. So maybe we'll just do a couple just to show you. Maybe we'll do, we'll do 24, which doesn't invert it, and then we'll do one that does. Okay, so 24. So this is where you do it into um, just one, two, one, two, and two, four piles. Okay, and then 24, what are we doing? We're leapfrogging. We're doing once, stacking pile one on top of pile three, two on top of pile four, and then here for shuffle 24, we're stacking the right pile on top of the left. Okay, and if you were here, I'd just have you randomly choose one among shuffles one, uh, 21, 22, 23, since they invert it. So maybe you'll say um, 23. Let's do 23, I guess. So you go one, two, as always, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then here is also the leapfrog. So one goes over two onto three, two goes over this neighbor here onto four. Now this time we're stacking left on right. If you look at shuffle 23, we're stacking left on right, okay? So rest assured that we could perform any number of any of these today or any of the ones that I have or will be showing you. Now, what I did to finish was, so what the way that we're going to finish, there's many, many, many different <laughs> conclusions. There's many different ways to finish, as you're probably seeing if you've watched other videos in this series. Uh, but the way that I decided to use that I haven't used thus far in this series is to create pairs of cards where within each pair the cards are of the same color okay so the way that i did it was i dealt into two piles a left right left right which seems like a perfectly fair way to kind of scramble the cards and then you pick up either pile now let me just show you the organization of the cards so that you can understand why the Klondike shuffle is going to work for us. So let me just show you. So we've done the left, right, left, right. Well, what's the organization of the cards, you know, before we do anything else? In fact, let me show you both of them because you'll see that really what it is, is it's just two halves of a Bessie sequence. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just two halves of a Bessie sequence. Red, black, black, red, and then black, red, red, black. So if you stack those in any order right here, it's still a Bessie sequence. Why is that? Because that was one of the first shuffles we showed you in this series, the LR shuffle. Stacking left on right or right on left, it preserves or possibly inverts Bessie sequences. So anyway, just we're looking under the hood. So this is the organization, color composition of the cards. Same thing here, okay? So in particular, notice that we have a red on top. Remember, if we turn the cards face down, this is the top card, that's the bottom. So we have a red on top and a red on bottom. So the Klondike is where you pull off the top and bottom cards off as one. Well, those will get pulled off together. They're both red. The next two cards are both black. So they'll get pulled off together. They're the remaining pair. Same thing here. If I pull off the top card and the bottom card, they're both black. And then the remaining two cards are red. So you're guaranteed to separate these cards into four piles in which in, within each pair, the cards will be of the same color. Okay, so what I did, which I fumbled with because of these cards being a bit uh, sticky. So I, I, a Klondike is where you pull the top and bottom card off as one. You're taking the top and bottom off as one. Hopefully there's just one there. That leaves me with two. Same thing here. Top and bottom 
off as one. Set those down and then set down the remaining pair. These are guaranteed to be of the same color within each pair. Okay, so you can go like that, go like this, go like that, and then go like this, and bring out your written prediction, if you had one, stating that you would perfectly separate the, the cards into pairs of the same color. And if you want to do something a little bit more advanced and give it a little bit of thought, you'll realize that it's not hard to do. Not only could we state with confidence that each pair would consist of cards of the same color, because of the organization of the cards, if we were to peek, but so this is before we do the, this is right after doing any one of our Bessie shuffles over here. So we Bessie, we're Bessie shuffling it. So we have the pack of eight cards. Now we're going to do a left, right, left, right, and so forth, okay? So before we do the left, right, left, right, that packet of eight cards, if you were to glance the, at the, and note the color of the bottom card of that packet, you would have enough information so that you could deduce in the end exactly which pair would be red and exactly which pair would be black. You would know exactly which pairs. And so what you could do is with the cards face down, you know, like they'd be face down, of course, like this. And you could, you know, kind of hover your hand over and go, hmm, uh, this one feels like it's, that one feels like it's red, a red pair. Oh, yeah, I got it right. No, no, what up, black? Are any of these just like, wait, these are, within each pair, they're all the same. That's weird. Well, what, what color are these? Oh yeah, those are clearly black. I can just feel it. Yeah, I got them. What about this one? Let's see. Ah, that one's red. I'm just seeing red in my mind's eye. I'm seeing red. Is that true? It is indeed. And then of course, really by elimination, these would have to be black. How in the world was I able to feel that, to deduce that after all of the random shuffling that we did dictated by you, the spectator. You told me how to mix those cards thoroughly, and then I just kind of separated them into piles of two in kind of a crazy way, and somehow I could tell that all of them were of the same color within the pair, but beyond that, I knew which ones were red and which ones were black. How in the world was I able to do that? Okay, so anyway, that's a, another application involving Bessie sequences and Bessie shuffles. So I encourage you to take a look at other videos in this series. And if you've looked at the previous ones, go ahead and move on to video number seven. So thank you for watching.